to us today. Uh, Professor Zahavi is the son of Ozi's rabbi, Dr. Zev Zahavi. He's going to speak about his father and, and his era. Uh, Professor Zahavi teaches mathematics and computer science uh, in the City University of New York, uh, where he runs his campus Hillel and is chair of the evening division of his department. He's a gra graduate of MDS, Yeshiva University, and Adelphi University as well. Uh, he lives on the Upper East Side, and we look forward to hearing uh, about his, his father and, and his era. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. This on? On it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I begin, I just want to make note of a few people who are here today. My brother, Rabbi Dr. Svi Zahavi, my sister-in-law, Bernice Zahavi, my brother-in-law, Dr. Israel Warman, and my sister, Dr. Professor Miriam Warman. I got everything right? Um, and everybody else, my friends that are here as well. Uh, a short time ago, Rabbi Schwartz asked me to speak at this program. It is an honor to be here tonight. I want to publicly express my appreciation for this opportunity. I wish Rabbi Schwartz a Rafua Shalema. I feel that this congregation is very fortunate to have such a capable, scholarly, respected, learned man as Rabbi Schwartz for a rabbi. Tonight, I would like to travel with you back in time to some 70 years ago when my father, Rabbi Dr. Zev Zahavi, served as one of the rabbis of this great synagogue. This past week, we observed the second yard site for my father, who would have been 95 years old. His name was Harav Zev ben Yitzchak David. Actually, when my father first came to OZ, his last name was not yet officially Zahavi. My father's original name was Zev Goldstein. Before coming to OZ, he was assistant rabbi at the Westside Institutional Synagogue. The well-known Rabbi Herbert S. Goldstein was a senior rabbi at the time. <coughs> Rabbi Herbert S. Goldstein conducted the interview and my father was hired there. When he completed the interview with my father, he told my father that he was pleased with many factors. He was impressed with the fact that my father was a Muslim of Rabbi Joseph B. Soloveitchik at Yeshiva University. He was quite satisfied with the fact that my father, although still very young at the time, already had pulpit experience as the main rabbi both in Lexington, Kentucky and Omaha, Nebraska. Your interview, your interview went very well, said Rabbi Herbert S. Goldstein to Rabbi Zev Goldstein. But, said the senior rabbi to my dad, your name is Goldstein and my name is Goldstein. What if we both perform a wedding together and the couple send in a check for Rabbi Goldstein? Which Rabbi Goldstein would get the check? My father responded without missing a beat, of course you would get the check, but, my father continued, I heard that in Palestine, let me add parenthetically that this all took place in the 1940s, Israel was not yet established and our land was referred to as the British Mandate over Palestine. I heard that in Palestine, my father said, people with the last name Goldstein are changing their name to Zahavi. I, too, have been thinking of changing my name to Zahavi, he told the senior Rabbi Goldstein. And so he was hired to serve for two years at the West Side Institutional Synagogue before coming to OZ. Rabbi Schwartz recently told me that at OZ there is currently a young rabbinic intern who is also named Schwartz. At least as of now he is also named Schwartz. <laughs> is he here today? Uh, while at West Side Institutional Synagogue, one of my dad's responsibilities was to teach an adult education course. One of the attractive female students caught the eye of this single young rabbi, and so he told the class that he had to take the telephone numbers of all of the students. <clears throat> it was some two years later that this very busy rabbi actually called her up for a date. It was three years later, on July 1st, 1947, that they were married here at OZ, in this sanctuary. It was at that time that both my dad and my mom legally changed their name to Zahavi. 
It was actually two years earlier, in September 1945, that my father was hired here at OZ to serve as rabbi under the distinguished Rabbi Dr. Jacob Hoffman. This appointment was reported on in the New York Times on September 8, 1945. The Times also reported that he was, quote, appointed as principal of the Beth Hillel Hebrew Institute. This was a school that was run here by the shul. The Times report continued. For the last two years, he has been assistant rabbi of the West Side Institutional Synagogue, for which office he had been engaged for the duration of the war. My father was American born to American parents. He had many responsibilities at OZ, including delivering sermons on Shabbat morning, running regular classes for the congregation in Hebrew, Talmud, Chumash, philosophy, and running the school. Throughout my father's rabbinic career, his sermons were reported on by the New York Times. The Times would send reporters to the synagogue, and my father would always be rushing to send out releases to the Times before the weekend on an ongoing basis. He definitely would not have been able to make the deadlines without his trusty word processor. Yes, computers did exist in the 1940s. There was the ENIAC, the enormous room-sized computer, which the US military used to crack the enemy's codes during World War II. And then there was my father's word processor, the Edith. But I called her mom. But it was not until many years later that I called her mom when I was born. Week after week, an article would appear in the New York Times describing important messages that my father delivered in his sermons. In all, some 200 of my dad's sermons were reported on by the Times. I selected a few of the many Times sermons reports to share with you this evening. If you Google Rabbi Zev Zahavi, you can enjoy a complete listing of all of these reports. But please, don't Google while I'm speaking. <laughs> on February 17, 1946, the Times reported, quote, through the spirit of Brotherhood Week, said Rabbi Zev Zahavi to Congregation Oab Zedek at 118 West 95th Street, it is hoped that the American mind may be instilled with the full recognition that the problems of post-war war world can be solved only through united cooperation. Then on April 11, 1948, the headline in the Times read, Nations Hope Seen in Return to Faith. And the subheadline was, Rabbi Zahavi says, America's reputation for justice must not be sac sacrificed. And he goes on to uh, write about that. On May 23, 1948, uh, the Times reported, The Rebirth of the Jewish State. Rabbi Zev Zahabi told Congregation Oaf 118 West 95th Street, must mark the rebirth of the Jewish spirit as well. On June 14, 1948, the Times reported preaching at Oaf Zedek Synagogue, 118 West 95th Street, Rabbi Zev Zahabi declared, the four weeks armistice offers the possibility of the conclusion of a permanent peace in the Holy Land, and it is a sign that the United Nations may at last achieve a settlement between the opposing views of the belligerent powers. The mediators, however, must acknowledge that there can be no settlement unless it is based upon the continued existence of the new Jewish state. On October 31, 1948, Rabbi Zev Zahavi in Oab Zedek Synagogue, 118 West 95th Street, described as moral ineptitude, consideration by the United Nations of sanctions against Israel. And then on J J January 23rd, 1949, the first elections Tuesday in the Republic of Israel enhanced the cause of democracy in the Middle East. Rabbi Zev Zahavi told Congregation Oab Zedek, right here, 118 West 95th Street. Not only Jews are going to the polls, but Arabs also, as citizens of the new Jewish state, shall exercise the democratic right to vote. 
some for the first time in their lives, he said. This fact should strengthen America's satisfaction with Israel's democratic intentions and hasten de jure recognition by the United States. On September 26, 1949, before Congregation Oab Zedek 118 West 95th Street, Rabbi Zev Zahavi said, the highly esteemed United Nations scale of justice must not be unbalanced by snatching the beloved city from the custody of Israel through the implementation of the proposed internationalization plan. Israel's respect and regard for all faiths and nationalities assure the reliable protection and accessibility of all holy places within its midst. On October, 40, uh, October 30th, 1949, the Times reported, UN warning scene in Tower of Babel. Rabbi Zahabi, in the subheadline, sub says, ancients spoke of unity and peace, but intended otherwise. Rabbi Zev Zahabi of Congregation Oab Zedek 118, West 95th Street, said yesterday that the members of the United Nations should take heed lest the world organization suffers the fate of the Tower of Babel, Babel? Uh, and collapse in utter failure through neglect of moral law. And the Times goes on to quote a little bit more. Uh, on December 11th, 1949, Jerusalem vote scored by rabbis, International, internationalizing by UN will not be easy, Zahabi says, and the United Nations may run embarrassing complications in carrying out the decision of its General Assembly that Jerusalem should be placed under the permanent international regime. Rabbi Zev Zahabi declared in a sermon yesterday morning before Congregation Oab at 118 West 95th Street. I know that the synagogue is on the map today, but he was one of the people that put it on the map. Um, just one or two more. Uh, the April 30th, 1950, the motto for the United Nations, a proposal uh, the United Nations inscribed on its flag, the biblical motto, love thy neighbor as thyself, was made by Rabbi Zev Zahabi in his, term, in his sermon at Congregation Oab Zedek at 118 West 95th Street. They never put that on their flag. And on March 30th, 1952, restored Israel called prophetic. Rabbi Zahavi declares it may, uh, it may usher in spiritual era mankind's redemption. The restoration of Israel was hailed as prophetic for humanity yesterday morning in a sermon by Rabbi Zev Zahavi of Congregation of Zedek 118 West 95th Street. 20th century civilization may yet prove to be the era of mankind's redemption, he said, with the vast resource of nature at its beck and call of modern science, physical salvation can become a reality in our generation. For the redemption of civilization, he mentioned, good deeds and penitence, but declared that, it, that the spiritual ideals of God alone can attune the efforts of humanity in the direction of man's progressive welfare. The godless states of communism, he said, will never attain the heights of human salvation since they have long ago ruthlessly eradicated any, of the, any acknowledgement of divinely ordained spiritual truths. Some of the copies are not that clear in the uh, Times, but when researching the speech, I found complete copies of all of the bi-weekly bulletins that this synagogue, OZ, published during the eight years that he was here at OZ. Each of these shul news bulletins had scholarly articles written on alternating weeks by Rabbi Hoffman and by my dad. These were fascinating times and the articles captured the feelings of the moment. The bulletins also gave me an idea of what was going on in the shul. I was surprised that my mother played such an active role in the shul. She was an educator, an educator, 
With both a BA and master's degree from Hunter and graduate work at Columbia, my mother was always busy. There's a popular phrase that has been made into a song, Lo alecha hamlacha ligmor. Does anybody know what that means? And that was a um, advice that my mother really never followed. I would like to share some of the texts that I thought were surprising and interesting from the bulletins. Uh, included in the bulletins are the following. On November 16, 1945, the um, Oabzetic News, it was called. I know you can't see it from here, but um, this is a copy of what the uh, looked like had a picture of the shul, which looks nicer today than it did back then. Um, it seemed to have been spruced up a little bit. Um, November 16, 1945, 11 Kislev, 5706, Religion and Science and Reality by Rabbi Zev Zahavi. He liked to write about Israel, about <coughs> science, about education. Uh, the Talmud of Megillah 31 tells us Rabbi Yochanan said, wherever in the Torah, you find mention of God's power. There, too, you will find mention of his humility. God's true greatness only magnifies puny man's shortcomings. Yet, like a helpless wisp of grass, man struggles to grow upward and to gain fuller knowledge of God's omniscience. In the past millennium, there have been four major scientific revolutions which have created unsolved problems for theological doctrines. And he goes on to mention all of these um, major scientific revolutions. Uh, and it goes on to the next page. Um, but I have another one that I'd like to share with you. On June 14th, 1946, The New Beth Hillel Curriculum, Revolutionary for Talmud Torahs. Rabbi Zahavi has completed a new and revolutionary curriculum for the Beth Hillel Hebrew Institute, which promises to make our school a top-ranking Talmud Torah in the city as far as recognized scholastic achievements is concerned. Rabbi Zahavi's new curriculum has been highly complimented by many prominent educators. On August 15th, 1947, Unskop and Aretz, uh, an article titled Unskop and Aretz, What Solution? by Rabbi Zev Zahabi. The um, whole question of Palestine has been before the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine for Education. That was called Unskop during the past weeks. With the time for decision at hand, it is fervent hope of every Jew that Unskop and the world shall not forget Buchenwald and Dachau or the six million. And he goes on, asks the question uh, later on in the article, what solution, Palestine? And he goes on and uh, concludes, it, is, it therefore must become a fact that the Jew who has been made to suffer um, like no other people in the world must be permitted unrestricted admission to Palestine. And he goes on from there. On May 7th, 1948, this is in the Oabzetic News, the Diamond Jubilee year is featured, 1873 to 1948, 75 years. The Jewish Fight for Freedom by Rabbi Zev Zahavi. As these words are being written, the valiant Jewish fighters are commanding themselves admirably in their war of liberation. The Jews have already carved out their state in Palestine by taking control of the region, which approximately corresponds to the area allotted to them under the United Nations General Assembly Partition Plan of November, 9th, of November 29th, of Tet November. Uh, and he goes on from there. On uh, March 19, 1948, spinning, the spinning Purim coin. Uh, the story of Esther is unfolded in a dramatic fashion. By a he, and it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, 
placing great emphasis on the first word, Vayahi, Vayahi, the Talmud tells us that wherever the word is mentioned, it denotes unfortunate events. In this light, we can readily understand the Midrashic statement, um, coins were struck in honor of Mordechai, on one side was engraved sackcloth and ashes, and ashes, on the other side, a golden crown. That's from Je Genesis Rabbah 39, 16. Uh, thus has it ever been when the Jew was experienced pain and sackcloth and ashes during the trying periods of Vayahi, he was able to maintain steadfast faith and resolute courage because he knew that the golden crown of better days of Bahaya was very close at hand on the other side. And he goes on and it, later in the article says, it seems that the coin has again turned very quickly, for we are now apprehensive that the UN decision may never come to pass. To allay this fear comes Purim with the message, the coin will soon cease. It's mad spinning, and at that time, one side alone will forever after be visible, the side with the golden crown. Such is the Purim theme, that all the Vayahis with, uh, will be truly things of the past in the golden era of Vayahi, uh, the era of light and gladness and joy and peace. On May 21st, 1948, uh, he wrote a clip in the um, Oabzetic News entitled, The Republic of Israel. The rebirth of the Jewish state in the Holy Land must mark rebirth of the Jewish spirit as well. Our success in the land of Israel will be measured only in terms of strong determination of Jews the Jews shall exhibit to reinstate the law of Israel. As much effort as is expended in rebuilding physical body of the new state must be matched by energetic labor to revive Israel's neshama. As we offer our thanks to the Almighty for permitting us to witness the establishment of the Jewish state, we must be ever mindful of the sacrifices we shall have to make on behalf of it in the days to come. The great sage Rabbi Simon ben Yochai said, the Holy One presented Israel with three, three precious gifts, each of which may, re, uh, may be required through suffering. They are the Torah, Eretz Israel, and the future world. Bracha 5a. Let us pray that God will account all the suffering that our people have experienced as sufficient to bring the fulfillment of the next step, the Gula Shlema, Rabbi Zev Zahabi. In the same issue of the bulletin, the news article describes what went on in this sanctuary uh, in, uh, after the week after the State of Israel was established. The article is headlined, Congregation welcomes Israel. One could sense the heartfelt emotion surging in the breast of our congregants at services last Sabbath morning as our congregation officially acknowledged the establishment of the State of Israel. Following a sermon of welcome to the New Republic by Rabbi Hoffman, the congregation arose and in silent unison responded to the special prayer offered by Rabbi Hoffman on behalf of Israel and its inhabitants. On behalf of the officers and members of the congrega of Congregation of Zedek, President Weiss announced the declaration of greetings to the State of Israel. Following Adon Alam, Psalm 126 was chanted, and Psalm 126 is um, quoted in the bulletin itself. Uh, a Song of Ascension, Psalm 126. <clears throat> On June 18, 1948, Beth Hillel 
um, to hold graduation ex exercises this Wednesday was the headline of one of the articles. Impressive program plan, the commencement exercise for the graduating class of Beth, class of Beth Hillel Hebrew Institute will take place this Wednesday evening, June 23rd at 7.30 p.m. During the, same evening, during, the, during the same evening, certificates of honor as well as certificates of bar mitzvah and prizes will be presented to the students deserving the same. And it goes on, and later on it says, Rabbi Zahabi will make opening remarks. Cantor Kalish will render musical selections. And then it lists the following prizes will be awarded. About seven prizes are listed, and the last one, uh, it says the Harris Epstein Award presented by Rabbi Zev Zahavi. Harris Epstein was my great grandfather. He was a Talmud scholar who studied Gemara with my dad when my dad was a teen. And Harris Epstein was also a creative genius. He invented and patented the folding umbrella, the extension ladder used by the fire department, several use, useful kitchen devices, an alarm, an alarm that would warn people of the gas escaping from their gas lamps at the time. He was a great positive influence on my father. The um, Oebzetic News, Bulletins of the Shul, um, had an interesting article, The Synagogue's Rooftop by Rabbi Zev Zahabi. And this was on November 5th, 1948. The Talmud makes a very significant statement, quote, a city, the rooftops of which are higher than the synagogue, will in the end be destroyed. That's in Sabbath 11a. Indeed, in a city like New York, with its many skyscrapers, such a remark, if taken literally, should fill us with an unabating fear of impending doom. Few in number are the buildings whose rooftops are not higher than the synagogues. Such a statement makes us wonder. Surely it would not be just to destroy a city merely because its synagogues were not erected higher than other buildings. There is, of course, a deeper meaning. And he goes on. Um, the synagogue represents spiritual bastion of our society when a synagogue is forgotten, when the house of God is neglected because of materialistic pursuits and worldly endeavors have assumed such great proportions in our daily lives and have grown to such dimension, gigantic dimension as to completely overshadow the symbol of all of our noble ideals. Then must that society beware, for it's headed towards a pit of self-destruction. And then he mentions the Diamond Jubilee anniversary of our congregation should arouse a sincere interest in the hearts and minds of every one of our members and friends. A synagogue which has remained steadfast to traditional Judaism for 75 years, 75, excuse me, long years in the American scene is truly a remarkable edifice. It is a skyscraper in the history of American Orthodox Judaism. Uh, we issue a frantic plea, he goes on at the end of the article, and says, assume a vital role in Israel's future by making active part, by taking an active part in our Diamond Jubilee celebration, so that the rooftop of traditional Judaism may be raised to glorious new heights. Accept the Lord, build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. Psalms 127. On April 29, 1949, the headline of my father's article was Jerusalem, the Holy City. The question of Jerusalem's future has been uppermost in the minds of Jews, Arabs, and Christians during the past weeks. Uh, Jewish and Arab opinion on the question has brought about the possibility of dividing the holy metropolis of Old Jerusalem, uh, which contains a majority of Arabs, and New Jerusalem, which comprises a majority of Jews. Neither the Jews nor the Arabs want internationalization of Jerusalem, and it seems very likely that if they are left alone, they will arrive at harmonious agreement. 
The Christian concern for Jerusalem entails a possibility of safe access to the religious shrines, which are visited annually by large pilgrimages of Christians. For this reason alone, the official Christian opinion has required internal, internationalization of the city, which could further aggravate and complicate the precarious situation in the Holy Land. Last Saturday evening, President Chaim Weizmann gave adequate assurance that Christian fears for a safety of their religious institutions were groundless. And he goes on later in the article to say, Jews could never be content with internationalization of Jerusalem as a permanent solution. Our 2,000 years of striving and hopefulness looks forward to the day of its return. And the article continues. On, uh, and he uh, closes the article, the time is now at hand when under Jewish supervision, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her dwellers with righteousness. November 1949, many things happened, but um, uh, one of quote uh, one of the one of the less personal things that happened. Uh, our member Herman Wook, son of Mrs. Esther Wook, uh, delivered a wonderful talk at the last meeting of the Yeshiva University Women's Organization, and in the same bulletin. Uh, Rabbi Zahavi to speak at the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue. Our congregants are cordially invited to attend this special Thanksgiving Day service at the Spanish Portuguese synagogue, 70th Street in Central Park West. Rabbi Zahavi will be the guest speaker. The service takes place Thursday, November 24th at 11 a.m. Very important week in our family. There's an article uh, on December 16, 1949, Anti-Internationalizationalism is the title. And it's a lengthy article about, against the internationalizationism of uh, Jerusalem, of course. And at the end, he says, if these were the motives which sponsored internationalizationism, then it behooves us to campaign with pride for a newly coined term, which I present as the longest word in the English language, namely anti-internationalizationalism. This term is a call for true justice in regards to the Holy City's problem. So now you know the longest word in the English language and it was coined by my dad. This term is an honorable con concept which the inhabitants, of, the inhabitants of Jerusalem may claim as a reply to the unholy alliance. On April 28, 1950, the Young Women's League uh, headline, Rabbi Zahabi to speak on Wednesday evening, May 10th. Mrs. Zev Zahabi, that was my mom, uh, president announced that the next regular meeting of the Young Women's League will take place on Wednesday evening, May 10th, at 8.30 in the home of Mrs. Kitty Fiala, 14 West 100th Street, apartment 16. Our own Rabbi Zev Zahabi will review the controversial and widely discussed book, Worlds in Collision. All, welcome, uh, all women are invited to attend. On May 18th, 1951, the headline on one of the articles in the bulletin is Boy Scouts Charter Presentation This Wednesday Evening. Rabbi Zahavi, um, Boy Scout uh, Troop number 595 is planning a most spectacular closing meeting for its charter presentation exercises, which will take place at Beth Hillel Auditorium Wednesday evening June 11th. Rabbi Zahavi, etc., uh, will be among the guests. On 
April 8, 1949, the Boy Scouts are also mentioned as part of the Beth Hillel Hebrew Institute activities. Rabbi Zev Zahavi has arranged the formation of the new troop of Boy Scouts of America, which will meet officially under the auspices of the Institute. Do we still have a Boy Scouts of America here? OC? Um, also, facts and figures for your information. They mention Beth Hillel Hebrew Institute, although its treasurer, Milton J. Jacobs, reports one of the largest enrollments in history, over 110 students in the Talmud Torah and 43 students in the kindergarten, making the total registration of 153 pupils at Beth Hillel. And it goes on to say, the Talmud Torah and kindergarten are under the direction of Rabbi Zev Zahavi, who is commended for his excellent, excellence of operation of the institution. Uh, currently, the teachers of the Talmud Torah are Philip Gelman, Reuben Bloom, Noah Goldstein, Miss Ruth Shapiro, and Jerome Bloom. Um, there you see another name, Goldstein. I wonder if it's um, somebody we know. Uh, Rabbi Goldstein was my father's brother, who was my uncle. Uh, the kindergarten is under the direction of Mrs. Zev Zahavi, who gratuitously renders her service without financial recompense in this fine venture. And it goes on to list more of the teachers whom I don't know. The kindergarten is also mentioned in the June 16, 1950 uh, edition of the bulletin. Kindergarten Board of Health License Extended. Our kindergarten is operating under the supervision of the Board of Health of the City of New York, which has extended the Board of Health license until the end of the 1952 term. This was in 1950. Uh, our kindergarten, which offers a program of religious, Hebrew, and secular training, is under the directorship of Mrs. Zev Zahavi. On um, October 13, 1950, uh, a news article about the kindergarten, kindergarten waiting list. Our kindergarten now has 100% enrollment. The three, four, and five-year-old groups are, are filled to capacity. We do suggest that parents who are interested in registering their children for the January term do so immediately. We are now maintaining a waiting list for future admittance. Um, our Beth Hillel Kindergarten is under the license and supervision of the Board of Health of New York, and Mrs. Zahavi is the director. On October 27, 1950, uh, the headline of one of the articles, Young Women's League to Hear Israel Report. The next meeting of our Young Women's League will take place on Wednesday evening, November 8th at 8.30 p.m. in the home of its president, Mrs. Zev Zahavi. An interesting evening will feature a special eyewitness report on present conditions of the State of Israel by a prominent personality who has just returned from the Holy Land. I don't know who the personality was. Does anybody here know? <laughs> How old was your father at this point, 1950? Uh, he would have been 95 today, and this was 1950, so that's your problem to figure out. <laughs> you're the, the math professor. I'm allowed to give assignments. <laughs> Hanukkah in the kindergarten. He, he was a young chap. Um, the youngsters in our kindergarten enjoyed a beautiful assembly program in which every group participated. The proud parents were truly overjoyed at the wonderful Hebrew progress shown by the threes, fours, and fives, as they call them. The kindergarten, under the direction of Mrs. Zev Zahavi, has gained an outstanding reputation on the west side. I guess they were referring to the upper west side. Um, and we invite our members to arrange for a visit to see the children in action by calling the principal, Rabbi Zahavi, for an appointment. And the article goes on. Uh, this was in June, I believe, uh, Beth Hillel Summer Day Camp. Our day camp meets 
for a period of eight weeks during the summer months, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, registration limited. Send your name and address to Rabbi Zahavi if you are interested. And it's um, appropriate to um, mention uh, this article because Lagba Omer is coming up. My father wrote an article about it in May 18, 1951, Mysterious Lagba Omer by Rabbi Zev Zahavi. It's a lengthy article, but it starts out, Lagba Omer, the 33rd day of counting of the Omer, which falls each year on the 18th day of ER, has long been celebrated as a day of good omen. Falling as it does in the midst of mournful spirit period, it exudes an aura of momentary rejoicing. And he goes on, and later in the article, the source for the joyous aspect of Lagba Omer is nowhere explicitly mentioned in the Talmud or other early rabbinic literature. The first explanation for the celebration appears in later works of the rabbis. And they explain, uh, he goes on with a few of the different reasons that um, Lagba Omer was celebrated. And in the end, he says, although the, the definite basis for Lagba Omer celebration may remain an unsolved mystery, we are grateful for its encouraging message of spiritual fulfillment and lasting Jewish tradition. Each of the scholarly explanations are accepted without question as authoritative in their essence. He had mentioned several uh, reasons for this. Lagba Omer, a meaningful day of joyous commemoration in Israel's history. Appropriate to mention today. Uh, one of the columns in the bulletin was called Notes and Jottings. And on June 15, 1951, Rabbi Zev Zahavi was guest speaker at the installation of officers of the Board of Trustees of Yeshiva University Women's Organization last Tuesday. Among our congregational family, the following were installed. Mrs. Abraham Wook, President Samuel Greenberg, Mrs. Norman Liberman, Vice Presidents, and Mrs. Hirsch Manashevitz, Treasurer. Uh, the Manashevitzes were members of the synagogue, and um, I actually went to school with a Hirsch Manashevitz that was named after the Hirsch Manashevitz um, mentioned here. On not sure of the exact date of this one. Sunday Minion Breakfast for Youth. Our Youth Sabbath weekend will conclude on Sunday morning, May 11th, with the Minion and Breakfast for all young people of the congregation. The Minion will start at 9.30 a.m. and will be followed directly by a delicious breakfast in the Beth Hillel Social Hall. After breakfast, our youth will participate in a discussion on miracles under the leadership of Rabbi Noah Goldstein. Uh, all young men and women of the congregation are cordially invited to attend the breakfast. That again was my uncle, my late uncle. Um, that brings us up to the 1950s, I believe. Yes, May 1952. And in 1952, actually, my dad left OZ to become the main rabbi of congregation, Zichron Ephraim, on East 67th Street. Many hours could be spent reporting about his 10 years there. While there, he founded a day school and gave it the name Park East Day School. Uh, here, too, my mom directed the kindergarten. The synagogue, as you know, would eventually take on the name Park East the name that my father created. While he was rabbi at Park East, my dad completed his PhD. Shortly after that, he left the rabbinate and served as a professor for 25 years. And he also authored several books. He had been retired for 23 years when he passed away two years ago. How can we sum up the era of Rabbi Dr. Zev Zahavi? His era lasted until he passed away. He was in shul at Park East Synagogue on the Shabbat before he passed. People would regularly come over to him until his last days, either at the Kiddush or they would line up at a Friday night shul dinner to speak to him and surprisingly to ha ask him for a bracha. 
It was reported to me that for an Ashkenazic rabbi, he gave very meaningful brachot. I was wondering what words would he say if he were addressing you here tonight? I thought about this and I think I found those words. There were words that he wrote in 1951. They come from an article in the OZ Bulletin, which he creatively titled, Ohab, Ohab Zedek. And November 16th, 1951, the title is Ohab, Ohab Zedek. The above title, my father writes, is not a typographical error. It represents a meaningful phrase which ought to become a motto of every member, worshiper, and friend of Ohab Zedek. The significance of the words should be understood in this manner. You are an Ohab, Ohab Zedek. You are a lover of Ohab Zedek. Our synagogue not only encompasses the spiritual life of hundreds of people, but more so stands fast with the fine tradition of 78 years of active participation and influence in the American Jewish affairs. Today, it is the task of Oeb Zedek to continue to satisfy the spiritual requirements of all traditional Jews in our community, young and old alike. It is the duty of our synagogue to bring the message of the Almighty and the teachings of our Torah to young and old alike. In one way alone can we in Ohab Zedek fulfill this mission, and that is through the kind cooperation and goodwill of our congregants. In our community, we may say that all of you who are sincerely Ohab Ohab Zedek who truly think in terms of the synagogue's success in all its spiritual endeavors, who think in terms of unity, loyalty, and friendship, who graciously impart time and energy for the synagogue's welfare. All of you lovers of Oab Zedek help to bring God's blessing upon our people of Israel. In return for such devotion, you may certainly gain God's blessings. In this very same fashion do the sages of the Talmud teach, early and late devote yourself to the synagogue so that you may prolong your life. Rachot 8a. Uh, may we paraphrase, paraphrase this, be a lover of Ohab Zedek so that heavenly blessings may be shared by all, of, by all in our synagogue family. May you be blessed for your attendance at our services. May you be blessed for your interest in our welfare. May you be blessed for your participation in all of our holy activities, in your support for our religious school, our synagogue functions. Your sincere cooperation ensures the successful continuance of traditional Jewish life on the West Side. No wonder the rabbis declared in the Talmud, a man's prayer is only heard by God when offered in the synagogue, Rachot 6a. It is through the house of worship alone, it is through the cooperation of the layman with the rabbi that it may impart proper tribute to the divine glory of one God. Deep gratitude to you, one and all, who have pursued and continue to pursue this noble ideal of Jewish life, the unity of men to proclaim the unity of God. With pride in what Oab Zedek has accomplished thus far, we must go forward together, our hands clasped in the firm grip of brotherhood to fulfill the godly mission of, Torah, of, of a life of Torah. In the words of Talmud Jerushalmi, do thou unite our hearts in the fear of thy name. Keep us far from whatever is hateful to thee. Bring us near to all that thou lovest, and do justly with us for the sake of thy name. Rachot 7b. Anybody have any comments? Terrific. Thank you very much for coming. What's the address again? <laughs>